Maldives' 40th anniversary. At the end of World War II, Latino veterans who were embraced as heroes and liberators abroad returned home to the United States only to face racial discrimination of the most grievous kind. Public theaters, hospitals, and hotels were off limits. Latino children were forced to attend separate inferior schools. Employers refused to hire and promote Latino workers. With the laws restricting our right to vote, our community was left vulnerable to various legal abuses. In 1968, civil rights attorneys, including Pete Tijerina, Albert Peña, Roy Padilla, Mario Obledo, and James DeAnda, resolved that the community needed an organization to take legal action, and thus founded the Mexican-American Legal Defense and Educational Fund, MALDEF. Following the model of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, and gaining a generous grant from the Ford Foundation, MALDEF quickly gained recognition as the law firm of the Latino community. Immediately they said, well, you go and incorporate and get ready for a proposal. Our first concept was to organize MALDEF only for Texas. I had no idea of the problems in the other states. When Bill Pincus came to the Ford, from the Ford Foundation to San Antonio, he shocked everybody when he announced that the Ford had awarded us $2.5 million. Student groups and civic organizations began to mobilize and unite in solidarity. In East Los Angeles, students from local high schools organized a mass student walkout in protest of blatant segregation in our schools. When the local police arrested teachers and students who coordinated the demonstration, Maldiv intervened and defended the constitutional rights of the protesters and the charges were eventually dropped. It wasn't long before Maldiv won its first national victory in securing Americans' most fundamental right, the right to vote. In 1970, Maldiv challenged the Texas legislature for carving up voting districts, all but guaranteeing that minority populations would not sway the outcome of elections. Maldiv successfully challenged this system all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. The court's decision in White v. Register strongly shaped litigation throughout the 70s against at-large systems and gerrymandered redistricting plans. The initial founders thought just using legal means, bringing lawsuits, was going to be sufficient to bring the changes that we thought we needed to bring. That has proved not to be the case entirely. That's why we're in Washington, D.C. That's why we're in Illinois. That's why we're in Texas and California state capitals, where important issues that confront lots of Latinos are, in fact, uh, sorted out on a public policy basis. In 1982, Maldef was once again in front of the U.S. Supreme Court, this time on behalf of undocumented immigrant children, whose parents would have been forced to pay tuition for them to attend public schools in Texas. In the historic Plyler v. Doe ruling, the U.S. Supreme Court opened the schoolhouse door to all children, regardless of their immigration status. A victory for children, our community, and the nation's future. More recently, Maldef successfully challenged the Tom DeLay redistricting plan in what the New York Times described as the most important voting rights case of the decade. The U.S. Supreme Court agreed with Maldef, and as a result, in 2006, the voice and vote of 100,000 Latinos were restored and a new 23rd Congressional District was drawn. If you um, step back and ask yourself, what does Maldef do? the work Maldiv does in voting, the work Maldiv does in immigration, the work Maldiv does in education. Those are the kinds of things that the Ford Foundation has to support. Those are the kinds of things the Ford Foundation is proud to have worked with Maldiv on for these 40 years. Today, still after 40 years of successful litigation and advocacy, Maldiv's work is far from over. Our community continues to face an increasingly hostile environment as localities pass anti-immigrant ordinances and the media demonize immigrants and Latinos. Maldef remains at the forefront, challenging anti-immigrant ordinances in California, Georgia, Missouri, Texas, or wherever they may be. Thousands of peaceful protesters around the nation rallied for comprehensive immigration reform, only to be met with brutal retaliation from local police. In Los Angeles, 
Maldiv filed a class action lawsuit on behalf of hundreds of peaceful protesters and families, including young children who were attacked by officers in May 2007. As Maldiv won battles in the courtroom, the nature of lawyering has changed. Therefore, Maldiv has expanded its efforts to safeguard legal rights by training Latino young professionals for appointive and elective office, community leaders to be forceful voices, and parents to guide their children's education. One of the most important projects that we have is in the area of a parent-school partnership program. So the, the next generation of Latinos will have the leadership skills. The ability that we have to educate and train parents to understand what their proper role is in, in our educational system, what the schools expect of them, but also what they can expect of the schools back will not only improve their children's education, but also gives them the tools to get more involved in civic life, workplace democracy, so they are truly the leaders of our community in the next generation. If you think about the next 40 years, it's a 40 years in which one in four children, one in four adults, one in four Americans will be of Hispanic descent. It's pivotal that Maldives fight for equal rights, for justice, and for fairness for that group of people, for us. As we look at the next 40 years, the future of America greatly depends upon the future of the Latino community. That means educational advancement. It means addressing the needs and, and contributions of immigrants as workers. It also means integrating our community into the larger society. Maldives' 40th anniversary provides an opportunity to recommit ourselves to our mission of service. While we have accomplished much to advance Latino civil rights for the past 40 years, the current political climate calls on Maldives to do much more. <laughs>